I knew I was autistic, but my mom's denial threatened my diagnosis. After years of research and fighting for the truth, I watched her twist my childhood story, yet I finally got the validation I needed. I'm 17 years old, I'm a fabby, assigned female at birth, and my mom is about 49 years old. Tomorrow is my diagnostic appointment, and my mom is required to come with me so they can ask her a few questions about my childhood. Now, here is why I'm scared. My mom believes that I'm just getting this because I'm paranoid and trying to pick as many mental illnesses as possible. Even though I have clarified to her that I have been doing research for years, when I begged her to do some research on it herself, she refused. She literally just refused. Why? She isn't bothered to educate herself, which as much as it annoyed me did not really matter. Or that's what I thought. My mom has been progressively changing things about my childhood. In the last few months I asked her when I started speaking, she replied about four years old and that was what she told me for most of my life. In the past few weeks I asked her again, since the doctor asked me about it. She said I don't remember, maybe like one to two years old, which is wildly different from what she said earlier. Same thing for when I asked her about my vocabulary, before it was just a few words at most. Now it's advanced vocabulary. This evening, I was telling her to please say the truth. I don't care what the truth is, just say it. She replied with, I'll say whatever comes to my mind. I am so upset right now. I'm getting an anxiety attack in my room and crying right now. If my chances of getting a diagnosis gets ruined because of her, because she is not being truthful, I'm going to cry my eyes out of their sockets. I still have an entire childhood case history to fill in. I can't because she refuses to and changes everything up literally twice or thrice for the exact same question. What should I do? Should I tell the doctor about this? What do I even say? I am panicking so much. What if they completely dismiss me because she lies or what if they misdiagnose me? Please give me some advice. I really need it right now. This is based in the United Kingdom. If this information helps. Response to OP, I'm sorry that you're feeling so anxious about tomorrow. I can imagine the test in itself already impacts you and having such a worry on top of it sounds really stressful. My experience having been diagnosed with ADHD and autism is that the doctor or specialist didn't only take into account what my mom said, but also my mom's attitude during the conversation, the interaction between my mom and me, and how I responded both mentally and physically. I think that it could be worth expressing to your doctor that you worry about your mom's answers, but I'd also expect your doctor to look beyond the answers and pay attention to other signs that are relevant for the diagnosis. Another response to OP, I would share your concerns with your doctor, perhaps even print your post here and give it to them, because it is pretty clearly stated. I don't know if you have any other diagnosis, but you're welcome to share this with her. I am nearly 50, 48 next month. I had received multiple inaccurate diagnoses since I was around nine years old. It caused a lot of unnecessary struggles and stigmatization to say the least. When I finally got the right one of autism, everything fell into place, and now the full picture of my past made sense. It effectively replaced the other diagnosis since now that my issues were seen as a whole. There were no longer singular diagnosis terms that only applied to a fraction of what was happening. Yes, I can still have some depression and symptoms of SATST, but they largely fall under the umbrella of autism. So rather than gathering diagnoses, I finally got the right one, and it has changed my life for the better. Update, I have had my autism evaluation today and the doctors have concluded that I'm autistic. This means so much to me, it's unbelievable. It's still weird because it does change a lot since I was already self-diagnosed, but hey, at least it can help me out in university. This morning, I woke up at 7 a.m., got out of the house at 8, 45 and arrived there in time. I had two professionals evaluate me, which was nerve-wracking to say the least, but hey, couldn't ask for more. The first 40 minutes were asking me questions, getting me to do certain activities, which included this bizarre book about floating toads. I DK either LOL. For the last 20 minutes, they asked my mom to come in with the interpreter, we're immigrants, so her English isn't that good. I took the advice you all gave me yesterday, and before they invited her in, I informed them that she may not be able to remember all the details, and that my masking at home may affect some of what she says, 
They reassured me that this is not as important as the conversations we just had. They proceed to inform my mom with the conclusion that I'm highly likely to be autistic. My mom stupidly decided that the first thing she should say about that is, my daughter doesn't have autism, she thinks she does. They were immediately thrown off. She was supposed to sit there and answer questions. That's the whole reason she came in, but right after saying that they didn't even ask her one question, all of my childhood case history was handed over to me, and I did all of the talking. I can't believe that this has finally happened. I've been fighting for a diagnosis for almost four years and waited for about a year for this appointment. I am so happy now. Thanks to everyone who gave me advice and supported me yesterday, the love I was shown was so sweet and I could have never been this understood by anyone other than you. I cannot stress how thankful I am that you took time off from your day to help me out. I sincerely thank everyone from the depth of my heart. You're all amazing people. I would also like to apologize for using the term autism diagnosis as it was brought to my attention yesterday that it is not an appropriate terminology to use. So from now on, I will refer to it as an autism evaluation. Thank you very much to the user who highlighted this. I have shared this post with other subreddits, so some of the information mentioned may not be completely referring to this subreddit. If there are any specific details I should remove, please inform me. Thank you. Now to the next story, story two. My 16-year-old son recently started imitating a boy from an Instagram TikTok account run by a mother who posts videos of her autistic teenage son. My son, 16M, recently started following this account on Instagram TikTok by this mom who posts videos of her autistic teen son. The kid is low functioning, I don't know the politically correct way to say this, and he can't talk? can't understand complicated concepts, etc. At first, my son started constantly referencing this account at inappropriate times like family dinner, making jokes about it, randomly showing me edits he made of the account, but that was harmless enough. However, lately my son has been imitating this kid and it's ruining my home life. When I ask him to do basic chores, he stims instead and refuses to do them. When I ask what he wants for dinner, he lists off ingredients in this weird way that doesn't make any sense. For example, chicken, taco, onion. He won't even answer me in complete sentences anymore when we talk. He's even doing random things around the house like dumping out entire cartons of milk into the sink and refusing to explain himself. At first I laughed it off, but this is actually making it impossible for my son to talk normally. He even randomly makes these noises when he's talking to his friends and I've gotten calls home from school. I'm not saying it's bad to be autistic, but my son isn't and never has been, and this has started to interfere with his entire life. Update. Hi everyone, I didn't think I would do an update, but I found out that my original post had blown up and gotten reposted on other platforms, so I thought I would update you all. After everyone's in the comments of my original post, I decided to go ahead and restrict my son's access to social media. After thinking about it for a while, I decided to give him 15 minutes of supervised use of his phone every day, in case he had to text his friends. However, whenever this time happened, my son would spend just a couple of minutes checking and quickly answering his texts. And then he spent the rest of the 15 minutes just watching the new videos from about this account he was obsessed with. He would imitate the kid while watching the videos and show me all the posts about him that he found funny. The first few times when I took away his phone after 15 minutes, he would get upset about it, dropping the autism act, and try to get more time. But that quickly stopped when I threatened to limit the time even more. After over a week, he seemed to still be just as obsessed with this account and imitating the kid's mannerisms. So I thought I might have to take even more measures to make him stop. However, soon afterward, I received a call from my son's school principal. It turns out one of the class had an autistic sibling and found his behavior offensive and annoying, so they reported him to the principal, who had brought him in to talk and gave him detention and was threatening worse if this continued. This finally brought my son to stop doing this in school and after I spoke to him about his principal calling me at home too. I made him unfollow the account on social media and then I gave him normal access to his phone again. He has never explained to me what was motivating him to act the way he did, the way he did, but I think it was a combination of encouragement from his friends, who found his accurate impressions of this kid funny and would call it going name of the autistic kid mode, 
and using it as a weird way to get out of doing work around the house. A month or so later, once this had all blown over, my son was looking at Instagram and saw my original post were posted over a clip of someone playing a video game. He asked me about it, and I told him it was me. He was a bit angry, but I think he realized he couldn't get too mad at me for it after what he had been doing. Just this week, my son saw a fake update post on the same account where someone had made up an update to my original post, which I didn't write. Because of that, I thought I should make this update telling you what actually happened. Now to the next story, story three. My husband cheated and gave me in sexually transmitted diseases while I'm pregnant. Am I the asshole for considering abortion? I'm currently eight weeks into my pregnancy. I had gone for a routine pap smear and STD screening. A few days later, I tested positive for gonorrhea. I had never cheated on my husband and never expected that he cheated on me. When I confronted him with the test results, he seemed genuinely shocked and insisted that there had to be a mix-up with the results. He swore up and down that he had been faithful and there was no way that it could be true. I insisted that he get tested. He agreed to do it, and as the days passed, he admitted that he had met a woman online and had sex with her. He claimed it was a mistake and he couldn't answer why he did it. He said the woman meant doing to him and it was a one-time thing. I'm disgusted and feel betrayed knowing that he put me at such risk. Our pregnancy was planned so we were actively trying before I got pregnant and he had no regard for that. The thought of continuing the pregnancy while dealing with this betrayal is overwhelming. I'm considering having an abortion because the idea of bringing a child in the mix is crazy to me. I don't think I can ever forgive him. I feel like crap for thinking of having an abortion. I just can't see myself continuing this marriage and having a baby with him. Relevant comments from OP. I'm already on the verge of losing my mind just from knowing he had unprotected sex with a random woman, risking my life and our unborn baby. I would rather not dig into what he's been up to online as I think that would cause even more pain for me. Commenter, does the STD risk the health of the baby? I think many of them do. With that in mind, I would end the pregnancy unless you're in your late 30s or 40s and really think this is your one shot at a child and it's your greatest dream in. To the extent of doing it single, definitely terminate the marriage. He is a slime ball. OP, it was caught early and I was treated. Me and baby are safe. Update, finally decided to find out the truth about his affair. I figured out my husband's email password and discovered that he's been on dating sites for months. I also found a woman's name and email address from hotel bookings he forwarded to her. I googled her information, found out where she worked, and called her. When she picked up, I got scared and hung up, but she called back and we had a long conversation. She said that she didn't know he was married and kept apologizing. She told me that if my husband and I have been intimate in the past few weeks, I should get tested because he gave her an STD. I was shocked because I thought she had given it to him. She said he gaslighted her, making it seem like she got it from someone else. I told her he did the same to me. I didn't mention that I'm pregnant. She said she cut him off and is considering suing him over it. They met on Tinder and had been seeing each other for six months. Although I initially thought she should have known he was married, but I believe her because my husband isn't on social media. He has an Insta account but doesn't post pictures. She confirmed that they had sex multiple times, contradicting his claim that it was a one-time thing. She said they spent time in hotels until she felt comfortable inviting him to her apartment. We came to the conclusion that she was just one of the women he was involved with because he gave both of us an STD. Hearing all this made me sick knowing there are other women. I feel stupid for not realizing what was going on and probably wouldn't have found out if it wasn't for the STD results. My husband doesn't know what I've discovered or that I've spoken to her. This is incredibly tough. I'm heartbroken and conflicted about whether I should schedule an abortion, but finding this out is pushing me towards that decision. Relevant comments, comment one, it's heartbreaking that you have to make this choice at all. Until recently, you thought your marriage was intact and this pregnancy was wanted, but I'd really consider whether you want to be tied to this man for the rest of your life and have to co-parent with someone who is this cavalier with your health and well-being. Oh, I wish I didn't have to make this tough decision. I don't want to co-parent with him, but at the same time, I feel so bad about having an abortion. 
My fear is that it might be a big regret that I won't be able to get over. It's so frustrating because each decision is heartbreaking either way. Comment 2. How did she not suspect he was married, even though she had never been to his house or met his important friends and family in six months? Remember, the baby is innocent and half of you. Oh, she's actually met one of his close friends who's also married, which might mean that his friend is also having an affair. I don't know for sure, but if his friend is okay with meeting my husband's AP, my guess is he too has an AP. I'm pretty sure his wife, who is my friend, doesn't know about this. Comment 3. The most important gift you give your child is an amazing father. It sounds like you have a horrible narcissist on your hands. If you go through with this pregnancy, he will be in your life for the rest of your life and play horrible mind games on you and your child. Going through pregnancy is one of the most vulnerable experiences of your life. When you're pregnant, you risk injury or death. Imagine if something happened to you and your newborn baby was handed to this monster as the sole caretaker of an innocent life. Be thankful you have clarity now while you still have time to make decisions and truly think of your future. You can't trust anything he says about improving. He is capable and willing to lie without remorse. If he feels badly, it's just that he feels bad for getting caught, not for cheating. Oh, if I decide to go through with this pregnancy, I would want nothing to do with him and would prefer that he not be part of this experience or the child's life. I know that's selfish to say, and it's also impossible because he will make our lives hell. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.